Hey everybody, this is Fabian Anlicker and welcome to this video. In today's video I actually want to show you a little checklist that you can use for your own sales funnel. So in case you have already your own sales funnel with uh, let's say a um, squeeze page where you collect the email addresses and then you also have a sales page with your own product or maybe you are, you are um, selling a PLR product that you are allowed to sell or whatever and then you also have your download pages where you provide your products that people bought um, this is something that you really need to know there are some things that you always have to check when you set up a sales funnel and this is what I want to quickly show you I have here a checklist for your sales funnels and by the way this is actually a bonus that I have in one of my own products uh, attached. So I have a product which is about sales funnels. So it's actually a, a package where you get uh, some templates together that you can use to create your own sales funnel. And I also explain how you can create a, a sales funnel there. And this is one of the bonuses that you get there, the checklist itself. So I want to quickly walk you through the checklist and tell you what is really important to check when you have done your sales funnel before you send um, before you start sending traffic so first of all that you need to check <coughs> excuse me is the squeeze page so there are different things that you actually should check before you start sending traffic so first of all actually is you have to check if the opt-in works so whatever autoresponder you use if it's GetResponse or Aweber or whatever you need to set up a new campaign there or a new project depending on on the the tool you use or the, the provider you use it's it's called different but um, let's say you are with uh, GetResponse then you set up a new campaign and then you have uh, actually your web form where you collect the email addresses so what you should do on your squeeze page go ahead and opt in with your name and your email address and then check on the autoresponder if the email address is really added to the list so and normally after a sign up you redirect either directly to a download page or if you have an offer then you want to redirect to your offer also check this one if this is all working so you opt into your squeeze page and then see if you are redirected to the page that you want to show up then then next one is the welcome mail check if the welcome mail is sent out so try it with a real email address so you can check the email if you have it in your inbox and depending on if you are using an exit pop-up on your squeeze page then you also have to check this one so see if the pop-up comes up with the right text in there depending on the browsers it could look different some browsers might not show the real text they just give you a pop-up with uh, do you really want to leave the, the, this page then you have to choose yes or no and in other browsers you could specify your own text so check also this one and then if you click on stay on page see if you are redirected to the right page then so then the next one is a buyers list so you should also create a buyers list where you put the people on who buy your product so this is something really important um, people who just opt in on your squeeze page you put them on a let's say a freebie list and if you have an offer behind your squeeze page and people buy your product I would then put those people on a, on a separate list you can call it buyers list or whatever but you just need to know that this is your buyers list and then also remove those people from your freebie list because you don't want to to market them with the product that they actually already bought so this is also essential that you change those people in the list 
then there are different actually possibilities how they get on your buyers list. One thing that you can do is you just create a new squeeze page after they bought the product. You put on a new squeeze page where they have to opt in, give you give their name and email address so they are on your new buyers list. Another thing is that you can use API that works with most of the providers, I would say, especially or for sure with GetResponse and Aweber. And um, what you can do is actually, if people pay with PayPal, you can define this directly in PayPal. So if somebody pays the amount of money, they will be put directly on a list that you define. This happens via the API um, connection or interface. The same you can also do with JVSU. If you put on a product on JVSU, you can also define it there. But you have to activate the API interface, for example, with GetResponse. Then also with the, <coughs> with the buyers list, check if the email address works. So do the opt-in, see if you get redirected to the right page. So let's say uh, somebody buys your product and they, after they paid, they need to be redirected and they also need to be put on your, on your new buyers list. So check this one. And then also if your email goes out to the, to the right email address and also of course with the right text. Automation. So that was what I just re <coughs> mentioned before is that if someone buys your product, you want them to remove on the freebie list and have on the buyer's list. In GetResponse, this is called automation. You can um, set up some rules where you can define this. So best is if you, are, if you have GetResponse or Aweber, you just log in there, you go to the help and search for that. So it's actually easy to set up. You just need to know where to do and how to do it. But this is also something that I would really recommend. Take away the people from your freebie list and don't market them anymore with a product that they already have bought. Then emails, next one, also very important. Check all the emails that are sent out by your autoresponder. So for example, with GetResponse, you can actually send out every email that you want to to a test email address. So just take any of your email addresses, send it to this email address, and then in the inbox, check everything. So first of all, the sender. Do you have to find the right sender email address and name? In GetResponse, for example, you can define several email addresses and names. So just be sure that you have the right sender in there. Then the structure of the email, does it look good and is it readable? So in different browsers, it, can, it could also look different. And also, especially on mobiles, check if you can read it there. Then, sorry about that. Check also if all the links are working in the in the email. So if you have set up affiliate links, check if they are really going to the product, if you get the, the clicks or if they even buy something there, if you get the commission. I mean, you normally can check that in an affiliate network. Just, just click on the link and then you will see if you got a click or not. And then also, um, normally, if you just send it out via GetResponse, the link is cloaked anyway, so you don't see the direct link. So people will not see if this is a, an affiliate link or not. But depending on the, the tool or software that you are using, check if you see affiliate links or not, and if you want to use nice URLs to, to have people not realize that it's an affiliate link, maybe. Then also be sure that you define all the emails that you sent out also as a plain text email. So not all the people are using HTML. So if you only define your mail as an HTML and somebody wants to open your email with a normal plain text, they cannot read it. So it's actually an easy thing. In GetResponse, for example, you just need to click a link and then you can import the whole text from there. 
So you send it out as plain text and also as HTML. Then check your sign off, especially, I mean, whatever you want to write in the end is uh, to your success, all the best, best regards, whatever. Especially if you send out promotion emails that you have maybe from an affiliate platform and you just copy and paste them, sometimes they, they say, um, to your success and then you see your name so change your name to your real name just be sure that you have your name in there and then of course in general check for typos people probably do not like it too much if you have too many typos in the email then exit pop-ups as I mentioned before very use exit pop-ups either on squeeze pages or you can also use it on a sales page or on a download page. Check if the message is shown properly in all the browsers and if it redirects to the right page. Same as I said before with the squeeze pages. But you can also use exit pop-ups for download pages or sales pages. So also check them there. Then let's go to the pages itself. So whatever page you have, be it a squeeze page, a sales page, OTO page, download page, whatever, what you have to check there is, can you see the title in the browser window? So for example, if you have a look here, you can see this is actually the title, my name and then my blog. So wherever you have an own page, check if you see that here in the tab, if you have um, defines the right title. Meta tags, if you want to use them and do a little bit of SEO with your, with your pages, um, also check them. Depending on the, the software or the tool that you use to create your pages, they normally have like, I mean, you don't have to do that in HTML code. Normally, you can do that directly in the, in the tool. So what you have normally is a title, it's a description, stuff like that, that you can fill out there. Then the structure and readability. Is it easy to read your text? Check it on all browsers and also on mobile. Is it shown uh, properly or does it look strange with some pictures or whatever? Just check it if it looks nice. Then again here, check all the links on the page. Are all the links working? Are they going to the right page? And do you have your affiliate links there? If yes, do they really work? Then another thing that you need to define is if you want to open a new link in a new window or on the same window. What I normally do is I actually want to open it in a new window. So especially if they are on a download page or on the sales page, if they click on any link, you still want to have your page opened in front of them and just the other page opening in a new window. Then also, of course, check the buy buttons. So we will handle that in a minute. Then do the no thanks link work? So what you have or probably you realized before if you are on a sales page and then you buy something and then you get an up sale or an OTO, whatever you want to call it. And there is another offer. And if you scroll down on the bottom of the page, normally you always have the possibility to say, no, I don't want to have this offer. I just wanted to buy the product that I did before. And on the bottom, normally you have a link that says like, no, I don't want your OTO product. I don't want this product, whatever. Just get me to the download page or similar, something like that. And you definitely need to have a, a link like that. And if you click then the link, you need also to check if you are redirected to the right page. So let's say you, you have an offer page then somebody buys it, then you get to the OTO page and there somebody clicks on the no, I don't want it. So either you have the next up sale or you have a down sale of this one you want to offer. So you need to check if it goes to the right page or maybe you want to send them directly to the download page. So also check this one. And again here in general, check for typos. Maybe 
let a friend of you or somebody else, another marketer, go through the whole sales page or the squeeze page and check them for typos. Then the buy button, this is really important. If your buy buttons do not work, you will definitely not make any money because <laughs> they cannot pay. So in the example of PayPal, most of the people they use PayPal, especially if you start out, it doesn't cost you a lot. It's just a small fee that you have to pay to PayPal. Um, first of all, what you need to check is the right amount of money there. So as soon as you click on your Buy Now button, you should be redirected to PayPal and you will immediately see the amount of money that you have to pay. So this is one thing. Then it could also be that someone um, logs into PayPal and then in the last moment before they actually pay, they decide, oh, okay, I, do, I, I don't want to buy it. And they hit cancel. And then you also need to check where will they be rerouted. So you can define this in PayPal, for example, when you create the buy buttons. So just be sure that you do not redirect them to the download page before they really paid. So what you normally do if they cancel, just bring them back to the offer page where they have clicked on the button. And then when the purchase is done, so they have paid, then you also need to check if they are redirected to the next page that you want to show up. So it might be an upsell or a next offer, or you want to redirect them to the download page, also check this one. So you can actually test a purchase with PayPal in different ways. One thing, and this is really the probably safest thing, you just buy your product with another PayPal address. Maybe you have a second one or then you ask a friend who has a PayPal address and you buy the product. And what you can do is then with your PayPal address where you get the money, you just give it a refund. So in this case, you can be sure that it works with the right amount of money and it just costs you a little fee for the refund. So it's just a, some cents. The other thing is that uh, you can adjust your buy button on PayPal and put it on one cent and you buy it then. So you pay only one cent for the product, but you see if it's working. And there is another possibility, a so-called developer access to PayPal, where you can test your purchases. I personally haven't tried it yet, so I can't tell you how it's working. I guess it is definitely working because they have the possibility. But uh, as I said, I haven't tried it. So these are actually the three possibilities that I know you can try with a test purchase. Uh, for example, if you have a product on JVSU, <coughs> Excuse me. They have also the possibility to do a test purchase, which is then also done with one cent. So also there you can actually test it directly on JVSU. And of course, if you don't use PayPal, whatever payment processor you use, you need to do those checks to be sure that the right amount of money is actually used and all the redirections of the buy, of the buy buttons are working. Then the last one is uh, tracking. Always track your traffic or also things on your page like downloads to see what works best. So here are some ideas on what you can track with any software. So one thing I would definitely do is track the conversions on your squeeze page for every traffic source. So let's say you, you have five different solo ads. So you also would send out five different links to the solo send, uh, seller, so you can then track it in your tracking software to see which solo brought in the, ma the most conversions and then even sales. Or if you're using Facebook ads or Bing ads or Google, whatever you use, just for every traffic source use another tracking link so you can actually see where is the best traffic coming from. Then what you also could track is uh, how many people who opt in do actually buy your product. So it could be that you have a conversion rate of 30% on your squeeze page. And then 
if you redirect those people directly to an offer page, you want to see how many people on the offer page do actually buy the product. So this you can also do with a tracking link. Um, I'm not going to go in the details here because that would go or it would take too long. I'm planning to do another video specifically about tracking itself, so we can handle that actually there. Then track also links on your welcome email to see how many people actually go to your download page. So what you do normally is in the welcome mail you say, hi, thanks a lot for buying my product or if it's only the freebie for uh, testing or trying my, uh, <coughs> excuse me, my free product. And then you also have a tracking link there to see how many people click actually on the link and go to your download page. And then the same on your download page, you can also track to see how many people in the end really download the product. So statistics actually say that quite some people, they opt in to your list, they get the welcome email, some of them they do not even open the email, so they don't want to get the product for whatever reason. Some they do click on the email and even click on the link on there get on your download page but then do not download the product also for whatever reason and some of course they do click on it and they download the, the product so this is also something that you can track to have some interesting statistics about the whole thing then you also could uh, track any outgoing links that you have there so let's say on your download page you also have a link to any affiliate offer then I would also place a tracking link there to see which people are going from your download page to the affiliate offer. And just as a short thing, I am personally using AdTrax Gold and my ClickBoss for tracking. Both are not free. You have to invest in a good tracking software, but it's definitely worth the money. I would definitely go for one of them and do not use the free tracking tools because most of them they are not accurate or I have heard also from other markets that they, they definitely do not work properly. So if you want to be serious about tracking you definitely have to invest a little bit of money in that and as I said it's definitely worth. So that was actually the checklist. I mean if I scroll down here I have some other things but I have covered this already in other videos. This is actually the important things that you need to check on your sales funnel itself, so on your pages, in your emails, whatever. So I hope you got some interesting information here and some more ideas. If you already have your sales funnel, maybe you learned something new, I hope, and uh, you have some more things that you can test. If you have tested all of them, you definitely can be sure that your sales funnel is working and that you, you are ready to send traffic to your offer. And as I said, this is a bonus of one of my um, products. I'm going to place the link below the video and you can click on it to see what, what the product is exactly about. As I said, it's a, it's a package for sales funnels you get a lot of nice templates where you can create your own sales funnel. So you get templates for your squeeze page, for a thank you page, and also for a sales page. And also you get some nice graphics that you can use on those pages. So with that said, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video and goodbye.